So when I did the modern day NBA version of this video, I had Brian Scalabrini in the intro. You can find that video in the description. How'd you like that self-promotion? So it makes sense that I have Joe Inglis of the Utah Jazz in for the all-time version of this, where we go down each letter in the alphabet, A through Z, and we look at the first name of every NBA player and we say, all right, who's the best player whose first name ever started with A, who's the best whose name started with B, until we get to Z. And as opposed to the modern day version of this, there's a debate to be made for some of the letters here, and uh, there might be some disagreements. If you disagree, that's all good, and just be respectful, that's all I ask for. A is Allen Iverson. He crossed up a lot of people. He attempted 9 million free throws, and he also ranted about practice. I really wish he would have had more talent around him when he was in his prime and coached by Larry Brown. He managed to take a defensive team to the finals. And as of right now, Anthony Davis is not the A spot, but if we fast forward a decade, maybe he would overtake Allen Iverson. Who knows? B is Bill Simmons' favorite player, and he also won't ever shut up about it. Bill Russell of the Boston Celtics. They won like eight straight championships. He's probably the best defensive player ever. At least defensive big man. Maybe Scottie Pippen takes best overall. But shout out to Russell. C is going to be Charles Barkley, who I had to create or download a roster of. So if he looks a little silly, that's okay. You know what I respect about Chuck? Is how much he is against the Golden State Warriors. And I understand it, you know, because it's a new thing with guys shooting threes and all that. But at some point, I just say to myself, you know, Chuck, it's okay to say that Steph Curry and Kevin Durant and the Warriors are really good. It is okay to say that, my man. Now, depending on how Chris Paul's career goes the next few seasons, maybe he wins a title or two, perhaps he ends up here. And now for D, well, I gotta say this, guys. There were a lot of guys going for D on this one, okay? Dirk, I understand if you want to put him here with his amazing scoring throughout his career. David Robinson being one of the best big men of all time for his athleticism and overall game with the uh, San Antonio Spurs. But there's one name that I'm going to give it to, and again, feel free to disagree with me. It's all good. I'm going to give this one to Dwayne Wade. I feel like we forget how good he really was at the height of his athleticism before he had injuries. Of course, he is the holder of perhaps the greatest performance in the history of the league with his uh, 3-1 comeback over the Dallas Mavericks, or the 2-0 comeback, I should say. Gotta give it to D-Wade. For E, we gotta go Elgin Baylor, who had one of the most underrated performances ever in an elimination game somewhere where he had two dislocated fingers and the guy dropped like 45 points in a game seven. Actually ridiculous, and kind of one of the lost stars. Like, we all know about him, but I feel like he's not appreciated enough for what he could do. Now, perhaps one of the best names ever for F, Fat Lever, who put up more than a few triple-doubles in his career. You go look at his stats, he has a few seasons of averaging 18 points, 7 rebounds, 7 assists. He was like a not-as-good version of LeBron James. All right, a very not-as-good version, but you get it. G is going to be George Mikan, who also kind of looks like the uh, cashier at your local Walmart. One of the best bigs ever, the way he changed the rules. And uh, perhaps the first real star of the NBA. Now, there were some competition at G. George Gervin, who unfortunately I don't have him in a Spurs jersey. One of the best scorers of all time. Kevin Durant drew comparisons to him. I really wish I could have seen the Iceman in his prime. And also Gary Payton, one of the best point guards and defenders ever. Hey man, it's tough. I gotta pick one guy. These ones were very close. H is not as tough. That's Akeem Olajuwon. And part of me believes that we see signs of him in Joel Embiid. But Olajuwon, his ability from pretty much everything. I mean, mid-range, posting up, athleticism, defense overall. Akeem's one of the best players ever. I is gonna be Isaiah Thomas. And shout out to him for being the best Isaiah Thomas ever. Although the other one is putting up some wild point production at the moment. Scoring a bunch of points on the LA Lakers with a sprained ankle. That's just ridiculous. I mean, that is very high on the uh, all-time NBA performances list. Now, funny enough, the next two letters have some decent competition in them, and then the one after them is, like, not even a contest. Jerry West. I'm gonna go with him for Jay. We're showing a lot of love to Laker fans. I mean, I'm a Celtics fan, but I don't like to allow that get in the way of just appreciating when someone's really damn good. 
Jerry West went to the finals too many damn times. He only won like once because of Bill Russell. Julius Irving definitely makes a bid. And that afro is something else. And one of the most entertaining players and influential players ever. And then John Stockton. Who's definitely your grandfather's favorite point guard. That's the third time I've made that joke now. And we should not forget about James Harden, who may end up being the answer for this when we fast forward a few seasons. But as of right now, I gotta go with Jerry West. And now the other one is K. Listen, Kobe, I love you, okay? One of my favorite players to watch since I became a fan of basketball. Carl Malone's a really good dude as well, even though Isaiah Thomas kind of hates him. However, for K, there's only one answer, man. And that is Kareem. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who played in the NBA... For so damn long, he went from an athletic big man to like a 45-year-old dude who could barely move, but he could still kill you with the sky hook, and probably the most impossible move to stop in the NBA's history. L, that's LeBron James. Why am I showing him in a Cleveland Cavaliers jersey from way back when? I don't know, because I'm a weirdo. Now, I said earlier that Kobe Bryant is probably the one guy who has wowed me the most in my time of watching the NBA. LeBron is a very close second. And when he's done, which is probably another five or six years, who the hell knows, man? Maybe he will be the best of all time. It's going to be tough, but he's on the trajectory right now. Credit to Larry Bird. He's definitely one of the top guys ever and probably the best trash talker ever. But you're not beating LeBron. And now for M, I mean, that's MJ. It's Michael Jordan. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar perhaps has the most unstoppable move ever with the skyhook. The MJ fadeaway is definitely up there as well. Michael Jordan was so damn good that once Clyde Drexler's Blazers beat him in one of the uh, finals games and Drexler was terrified in the locker room like, dude, the guy has like 12 moves. We just got lucky tonight. Now, uh, Magic Johnson, he's a good dude. He's the best point guard ever. And he also makes the most obvious tweets of all time. But you're not beating Michael Jordan. Now, for N, we have Nate Thurmond. And besides being able to bench press your entire house... He averaged 15 points and 15 rebounds for over a decade. So he was pretty damn good. Shout out to him. Now for O, we got the big O, Oscar Robertson. Most famously averaged a triple-double for a season. Although he really averaged a triple-double for five straight years, if you go look at his stats. He also said that the way to defend Steph Curry was to get up on him. So, thanks for that one, Oscar. According to Bill Simmons, he was a big jerk to referees, so he'd fit right in on the Clippers. And, uh, well, he's a good dude. Now for P, the biased Celtics fan in me wants to give this to Paul Pierce. But, um, we have to be a bit more realistic here. This is Patrick Ewing. We finally got a Knicks player in here, so that's a good look. I say that, and probably someone else I already mentioned played for the Knicks, but I'm not going to go and backtrack at this point. It's too bad that Patrick's knees were not able to hold up as he got older, but he was really damn good. Also, shout out to Pistol Pete Maravich as well. Similar to Allen Iverson, it's too bad that he never had the right sort of team around him because his theatrics and just abilities, perhaps he could have led a team to a title. Now for Q, we have Quinn Buckner. And I'm sure he was a good dude, but when I read his career stats of 8 points and 4 assists, not many guys in the NBA have started with the name of Q. R is going to be tough. There's Rick Barry who is one of the most disliked guys in the history of the NBA, apparently. I might be misremembering that completely. There's also Reggie Miller. Don't pay attention to what he looks like because I had to download a creator roster. He looks really freaking bad. Reggie, when are you going to be in a 2K? I mean, I have to assume they're going to pay you a lot of money, right? Then there's also Ray Allen, who was one of the best shooters of all time. And I mean, we all know what he did in Game 6 against the Spurs. Does Russell Westbrook not already win this? He's like nine years into his career being an athletic freak, scoring at the rim, and he's going to average a triple-double this year. Might have to give that one to Russ. Now, S is not a question. Notice the fact that I'm not even going to mention Steph Curry, except for the fact that I just mentioned him. Shaquille O'Neal, one of the most dominant players ever. And my favorite quote about him came from Dan Lebetard when he said, You can't dribble, he can't shoot, and he's the worst basketball player ever. And now we move on to one of his rivals, Tim Duncan. Shout out to Tracy McGrady. And if he didn't get injured, uh, well, he still wouldn't be up here, but he might be a little closer. 
Tim Duncan, best power forward ever, low post extraordinaire, one of the best defensive players ever. You get it. Now for you, we're going to give it to Ime Yudoka, who I'm cheating here because his last name starts with you, because I couldn't find anyone whose first name started with you. As a player, he was whatever. We're going to give this to him for one reason only. He's married to Nia Long. And that right there, he's winning. Like, there's 26 guys here. He's the one who wins this whole thing in the end. V is Vince Carter. I appreciate the fact that he has this rivalry going on with Paul Pierce and Dirk to see who's going to retire first since they all came out of the same draft class. I have to assume that's what those three are doing. VC in his prime, not many guys more entertaining than him. W is Wilt Chamberlain. I find it funny how Chamberlain is like kind of an NBA unicorn at this point because there's so little footage of him, but all we hear about is how he was like this friggin' Greek god who could average 50 points a season and grab 10 assists because he felt like it. I mean, you see the stats and you're just like, dude, I'd love to see that in real life. Xavier McDaniel, he scored over 17 points a game six years in a row. Unfortunately, was uh, also a member of the mid-90s Celtics teams, which were terrible. For why, this is Yao Ming. And up there with Penny Hardaway and Derrick Rose and Grant Hill. What could have been, man? What could have been if he just never got hurt? We still saw some signs of him just being a center who could just score at will from down low, but also had an outside game. And now it's fitting that the last name here is also the best one, Zelmo Beattie who played for the Utah Stars as well as the St. Louis Hawks, averaged 17 and 11 between 1960-something and 1975. So there we are. If you want to recap, it's not going to happen because that would take like 12 minutes. Again, is Joe Ingles going to be on here at some point? Yes. So shout out to Jerry West, but that title's getting taken soon. Thank you for watching, and um, I don't know, shout out to Penny Hardaway.